Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb uh, SEO Questions, episode 455. Uh, each week we meet here to review the uh, questions and answers given on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net and uh, he, he resides in the suburb of um, Wimbledon in the UK. About 100 miles north of uh, Masataki is Tim Kappa. Oh, I should say Masataki is also a, a Google product uh, expert on the uh, AdSense uh, community. Um, Tim is uh, a Google um, uh, expert, is a, is a product expert in the Google My Business community. And Tim resides in Corby, about 100 miles north of Massataki. All right, so let's um, get this show on the road. Our first question is from Catalan Giab. Giangos. Uh, it's titled Unpublish or Delete. Uh, Catalan goes on to say, how do you think it is better to proceed with the content you want to be removed? I understand that you want to do a 301 redirect and remove it from the index, but what do you think is better and why? Unpublish or delete? I see our good friend Richard Hearn uh, um, answered uh, during the week. Well, unpublished obviously is the same thing. It just switched to draft. So unpublish or delete, they'll still be four or fours. So now that yeah, the question is, um, why is that content being removed? Whether it's unpublished or deleted. Um, is it a product that's completely gone, never coming back? If it's a product that's completely gone and never coming back, but it has a top level category, you may want to 301 redirect that product to the top level category. So if it's a a set of aluminium bistro furniture with four chairs and a square a square table but that's never coming back but you have got um aluminium furniture thing you may want a top line category you may want to 301 redirect it to that um if you've got a piece of content that's never coming back uh not necessarily a product and it's just crap uh it never performed you look in analytics it never got one single bit of traffic in over you know a year two years and it's just shit. and you're not even going to bother repurposing it or doing anything with it just let just let it go 404 um uh, there's nothing wrong with 404s um so the question is is you need to look at the page why is it being removed um and does it fit within something else yeah and then that'll make your decision you know sort of am i going to 301 redirect this um if 404s are okay if it's gone, it's gone. Um, it's not a problem with that. But, you know, in certain circumstances, you may want to 301 redirect and not to the home page. Just look, you know, look at it, look at it properly. Uh, what makes sense? If a user had to click on something, expecting to see this, what would make sense for them to see? Right. If it was gone, what would make sense for them to see? Yeah, so 
unless there is a good reason to redirect to a similar or essentially the same page, 404. Thank you, Mr. Turkey. Thank you, Tim. Okay, we will roll on to number two. Okay, I'm recording that as a yes. Christina Lee asked the question, it's titled, our company was recently acquired by a larger company. Um, and she goes in to say, and they want to start moving our highest trafficked website blog posts to the larger company's uh, HubSpot blog uh, on a subdomain uh, with the goal of uh, increasing traffic to the larger company's blog. If I duplicate the uh, blog content and put a canonical in place for the larger company's URL, will the post on the new company's blog assume the SEO juice that was built from it on our site? Or would it be better to redirect the original URL to the URL on the larger company site uh, excuse me, to maximize the uh, <clears throat> search engine optimization carryover? Side, um, side note, the, the, the sites are not prepared to fully merge yet. Uh, both will continue to run for the time being. This is just the first step they want to take. Uh, any feedback or suggestions would be gratefully uh, appreciated. And I see Michael, my good friend Michael Martin has uh, uh, answered um, during the week. Yeah, you know, I kind of agree with, um, okay, okay. I mean, doing bits and bobs, taking one bit and then another bit and then another bit when it's not already, it's just like weird. Just wait till it's already and then merge. On the flip side, we know how stupid owners and project managers and companies can be with this crap. So if you were going to do it now, let's look at the let's look at the thing um essentially ultimately when you do a merge when you when you're going to be merging the old site you know like for like urls are going to be 301 redirected like for like to 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 the new right so having all these canonicals in place, if you start shifting them and then having canonicals and then copying over and then, you know what I mean? It's, it's going to get messy because when you do the merge, you're going to be like, well, I mean, I'm guessing they're going to be, a, they're not going to do it individual one by one. They're going to do the whole thing, right? So I'm just thinking of like, I don't know how many they've got yet, but they're going to do the whole thing. They're going to do the whole copy and migrate and and then and then onto there so nine times out of ten if you've just done a canonical and chucked it on there it's going to actually duplicate it again onto the next site then you've got to hunt down that one to remove that one that was just created when they did the database copy shift listen just if you want to do it just chuck it on there delete on the old and 301 redirect and at least that way that 301 redirects in place, it will remain. You're not going to be duplicating things. I, I don't know why you just, just don't wait and do it all at once properly. But if you are going to do it that way, I don't think you should fuck about with canonicals. Uh, copy it onto the new site, like for like URL, because remember your, your all your things. So like for like URL, um, delete off the old and then 301 redirect. Um, I don't know what your um domain wise is going to be like but somehow you got yeah i i don't know how that is going to be probably ht access you'll have to do your content from just like a redirection tool because it's a, probably a different another domain now i don't know how you set up or whatever um and as for link juice flowing through and you know doing something like that and well no it's an it's a new page on the new site it has to be crawled 
just remember you're going to have that other one sitting about where it has to be obviously removed out of that and then you know it's it's not ideal i would ideally wait because google has to gonna is going to have to go and figure out the entire merge and change doing page by page a little bit here and there let's say five this month and two next month and and then in six months time the whole thing gets merged i think it's a bit of a pain okay any more all right let's um, have a look at number three on our run list from it's from lisa Masenda. uh lisa asked a question titled the first paragraph does not include the keyword phrase uh, lisa said hi i am working with a business owner who is writing blog posts uh, he uses a storytelling approach uh, which means that the uh, first paragraph of his blog does not include his keyword phrase he tells an allegorical story in the first paragraph how can i help his blog's search engine optimization uh, when his keyword phrases don't appear until the second paragraph Lisa, where have you read that you have to have the keyword phrase within the text within the first paragraph? Oh, uh, that explains it. She's using rank math. Okay. It's the same thing as Yoast and all this kind of stuff. It's traffic light system. Okay. So if he hasn't chucked in the keyword phrase X amount of time per the amount of words per paragraph, it gives you this traffic light bullshit. Yeah. Lisa, top tip, turn that stuff off. Not rank, like not the plugins, turn that those things off. They're, they're, they're of no use to anyone. In, in fact, it can be quite a bit of a hindrance because nine times out of ten, <coughs> the, the the person that's writing it, in this case the owner, he's going to start writing a piece of content and he starts looking at this little tree, green thing. And then he starts, he's finished a really good article because he knows his stuff, he's the owner. And then he looks at the traffic light and it's red. And then he like, oh man. And then he shoves another word in and he and then shoves another word in and it goes to Amber. And then he shoves a few more words in here, there, right? And all of a sudden, a really good, well-structured, written piece of work from an authority now looks like a keyword stuff piece of crap. Just, just disable that, man. I take it you're not a fan, Tim. No, that's the first thing I do. If I take on a client and they have Yoast in there, that's the first thing I do. If they say to me about things, I literally go and turn off the little traffic lights. Because um, you can, you can individually turn them off, but I just go and turn it off. It's mm -hmm. like, bye. Because that allows them to concentrate on actually creating proper content, whether it's a new um you know whatever they're adding uh, as part of their business and it allows them to do it and then i might just nip in and refine things have a quick look at it maybe just uh, structure it structure it paragraph wise or something like that but if the, 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 those things it just makes people spam their own their own stuff it's terrible yeah. Yeah, fair enough I said, Bill Hartzer, um, uh, it, it agrees uh, w with you too. Um, okay, I'll just scroll up this last bit and uh, we'll go on to number. Yeah, yeah, I just I just had that. You know, if David were here, you know, we would have um, a good input from um, the perspective of a content writer. And yeah, I think instead of worrying about whether you know, key phrases or words in the first paragraph or not is it a good copy does it read well does it attract people do people keep on reading after the first paragraph you know these are the things that you should be asking rather than how many times the keywords are there yeah thank you Masataki. okay Let's go to number four. Al Bakito asked the question. It's, it's titled, Are You Violating Any of These Spam Policies? 
<laughs> Has anyone noticed a recent decline in organic traffic and not rankings? Um, I think people get too tied up um, with um, rankings and, and um, that they get concerned about, you know, up, like changes. Well, firstly, it's like, like it's not really a spam policy are you talking about algorithms now there's been several updates there was the low low quality content which was oh, sorry the unhelpful content then they pushed out a core update like literally two weeks after that then they pushed out the product something or other uh for basically same again you know and then another two weeks later they chucked out the you know it's like well which one if you've noticed a drop you need to identify it's not you, you're never going to understand what the algo is doing in that sense um but you really look at your things um i've i've uh, really only noticed on uh, mm. In fact, let's see on uh, two sites. Uh, yeah, on two sites. Um, and I kind of know what I've done there um, on, on particularly the one just by looking at it. Um, I've I've just gone complete. It, it, it was quite a few years back, and I was just a little bit stupid on interlinking, um, and now it's just a question of working through that and removing some of the some of the silliness I had in my mind. Sometimes when you look at it, you go, "Well, why did I do that? Was there a reason?" No. Um, so yeah, you know, look, and of course the other flip side is who has. Uh, taken over that position if you were position two who's taken over slot two where are you now and who's on slot three um what are they doing better or perceived better in your eyes than than where you dropped because of course someone is going to take you that slot so you know like without being silly about things you can normally tell what you've either done or what the site isn't actually doing um, in regards to what the competitors have stepped up their game with. You know, you, you know what I mean? And, and, and don't think about links. I'm talking just on-site kind of stuff, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more? Let's have a look at um, number five on our run list. Uh, Eric Ranzenhofer asked the question titled, how does Google figure out that I'm top trying to use a certain phrase? Um, he goes on to say, um, how do I tell Google that an expression is a long-term keyword? Do I have to put it in bold? Uh, how does Google figure out that I'm trying to use a certain phrase as, as a long-tail keyword? word uh because that that expression or phase is on there it's how you've used it where you've used it and and and, and what it relates to um you can quite easily see it so go into your search console um look at the phrases and then you'll see and then what you can do is you can flip through that phrase you can flip through that phrase and see which page Google, uh, like, yeah, look, it may be that they've used it and they've seen you on like page 96 or something, but that's not the point here. The point is that they've seen that phrase, they've understood it to be on the site, and what page they equate that phrase to be linked to. You don't need to do anything with it, but typically, typically a long so a short term a short tail you see 
if you're using it just kind of on a um the page that it you're using it on de depending on what like the structure i mean we we, we don't know uh, as such but um let's say it's yeah we'll go back to aluminium furniture so this page is on aluminium furniture right um you've got a little bit of an introduction to uh, who you are as a company and how you make aluminium furniture but your short tail there is aluminium furniture um but within that you've obviously got different subsects whether it be chairs tables sets etc your longer tail phrases come in when uh for example there may be a product on that page which is aluminium table and chair sets four chairs and one table that is essentially it's in the text it's a long it's on the page it's a longer phrase now obviously it's a little bit different because that's actually linked to a product so that in theory the longer tail should actually be ranking but ideally at the end of the day if for example if that was on one piece of content in that sense it would surface or understand that this piece of content's on this page um so but the whole thing here is google will understand if you look at search console you in fact scroll through the whole search console and and, and expand it i mean i'm assuming this isn't really a new site and expand it and you'll just see tons and tons of words where google's kind of understood these words or phrases or words together um and and on what page you can click it and what page they 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 feel that that phrase and they've displayed that page for that phrase in the search results and you'll see some really random really weird things you should definitely you know and then you can see how google is seeing these words and phrases uh in a page um uh and and and, and understanding them and no you don't need to do anything with them as such um if that long like if you really wanted that longer tail phrase in a piece of content but remember i don't know what your piece of content is actually about i'm guessing the longer tail is this this thing you could put that into a paragraph heading and then give a little bit of intro onto it but they, regardless google will still you know you go and look in search console and you'll see how they are putting words and seeing which page best suits that word Thank you, Tim. Might be a hard act to follow, but do you want to try, Matt Messer? No. I mean, if you start a bold, long tail keywords, you know, you might be bolding quite a lot of things on your page. Um, so, yeah, as Tim said, look what you're ranking for and see what common, if there are sort of commonalities between those. So you might be actually ranking for something broader, but peripherally. So, yeah, I suppose the answer is don't overthink it and don't over strategize based on that. Yeah. Certainly look for the patterns, certainly look for things that you're ranking for see what you can do with those work on that but by their very nature overthinking and over strategizing for long tail that really isn't worth it in most cases yeah you know the other flip side is depending depending on what this long this long tail phrase that you want to do i like like you haven't given us much to work on yet is it a question is it like why does algae grow on furniture in winter do you see what i mean that may just be its own little piece of content in itself whether it's you know 200 words just to explain that and that may even fit in a faq on somewhere on one of the pages or whatever 
like w w what is this phrase and and why do you want to be known for it and if you want to be known for it um can it actually serve in its own individual unique little way can it be nested somewhere within the site with its own little 200 words 50 words or it could be a thousand words like explanation to what this actually is like just chucking it randomly into bits of copy you know that's more of sort of semantic understanding to google in in terms of different things um so you haven't really explained what what this is you know come tell you what come back with this phrase tell us what your site is like why are you trying to do rank on that um are you specifically trying to rank for that or would you like this article to also appear if somebody searched a, a, a variation of what the actual title is or is that a product i mean we don't even know so yeah a little bit more context and we could probably look at that page and go yeah you know what you could probably do this this or this that would that would probably be better than us sucking thumbs yeah thank you tim thank you mr Tuggy. all right uh, let's go to number six this one um, is um, it's titled Company B wants to get all traffic from A redirected to B. It's uh, a question from Wilco Den Brock who goes on to say, uh, new, 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 new question. Uh, Company A is brought by Company B, both on WordPress. Company B wants to get all organic traffic from A redirected to B. Uh, how do I do this the best way? And also, is there a simple plug-in um, that, that is called a, a 301 redirect? Uh, yeah, there are plugins called 301 redirects. But what, what you're not taking into account here is that this one that's going away is literally going away there is going to be no site there so it can't be hosting a plugin to redirect all its pages to another site that site's going away which means there's no way for this plugin to live so you need to do a top level uh ideally you know you can you can set up a wildcard or you can set up uh like for like once you've shifted all the content across this site's going away it doesn't exist so you'd have to do it set up by the hosting right by the by the host to then redirect everything via that so every time anything comes in the host sends it direct to the exact page so yeah i would speak to the your um developer of the of the sites and and they will sort that out for you like for like or if some of the pages are very similar but actually not going to be copied across then you need to plan out your 301 redirects in advance use a spreadsheet so cop so like for like that's being shifted across those will automatically 301 redirect ones which aren't being shifted across but one exists already on that site then you need to set up you need you need to obviously plan those out properly and then that all gets done via the host level on the one when it get when it, when it gets switched. Thank you, Tim. Any more? Okay, this is number seven on our run list. <coughs> I have an online store and want to add a product schema. It sounds like a, a question that. Um, at least one of our panelists tonight uh, is our favorite. Hasnain uh, goes on to say, greetings, I have an online store and want to add product schema. There are 500 plus products <coughs> on my store, so do I have to add schema on all of those 500 products individually, um, which will be fatiguing, um, or is there a shortcut to it my site is wordpress based um waiting for answers anxiously well i guess there's two ways here the ideal and preferred way would be to take 
product schema as such and create rules for that on your on your in, in your PHP files for your products, right? Take name fit in to product, take X fit in to price, take in stock fit into the schema. And it automatically populates on every single product and fills it out, right? So that would be your ideal way. The other ideal, the, the other, the other way was just for the flipping plugin. Um, I can't really recommend it because I can't really recommend any particular plugins. I'm sure a bit of searching around, you can find a good one that will do product schema for you. In fact, you know what? I think WooCommerce doesn't WooCommerce have built-in product schema? I'm sure it, it may. Does it? Anyway, I don't know, but it may do. Um, yeah, and so 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 there are obviously plugins, but the ideal one is to, you know, it's quite simple. Take a product schema based on how your product is laid out, because of course. There's no point having blank elements in product schema that isn't actually on your page. So take your product schema, take a particular product, work it out, right? That works. Test it, boom. Yes, perfect. You do it in Google's tester. And, and then your developer would take that blank schema, product schema, put it into your product PHP, and use elements as in fetch, for this fetch for that fetch for this to fill you know and and based on your on your outline of your because obviously all your products are going to be exactly the same that would be the ideal way next one is yeah look for a plugin you know you don't have to do it individually on page um i'm sure work woocommerce has it uh, has has product schema that can be enabled uh but if failing that there are plenty of um plenty of uh wordpress plugins that will do um product schema for you and you will have to yeah you will have to enable it them on some of them like you'll have to like on each page you will have to you know say enable but that's just a question just you know clicking that on and off and whatever display on page or and you probably have to format in the settings of some description like whether it's got display reviews and you don't do reviews on your site so then you could remove that element out of it but yeah okay well it's um thank you for watching time um, was there anything uh, anybody had to say before i declare the meeting closed No? Okay, so that's it. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week. Oh, by the way, before I go, I must thank um, you, uh, Tim, and Masataki Wasa, um, and your valuable, valuable contribution is greatly appreciated. Um, okay, we'll, we'll be back next week to do this uh, all again. But for now, it's good night. Stop recording.